All right, hi everyone. Today we're working with presets, the preset object in Max. Um, so preset object stores the value as user interface elements, things like number boxes, I tables, sliders, dials, toggles, anything you interact with in the program, but the program doesn't save its state. So um, it's a way to store data with the click of the mouse and recall it the same way. Um, and send out a lot of changes to a large number of destinations or to a smaller specific number of destinations. Um, so I'm going to open up in here and I'm going to create some sub patches right away because I want to show you different features of the preset. So the first thing, um, I can create a sub patcher called preset all. And by default, what the preset all does I'm going to add it in and I'm just going to add it in with preset and you'll see it changes to a graphic element with um, slots for storing user interface elements. User interface elements, we can add numbers, sliders, toggles, um, dial, anything we interact with change those things to whatever you want. Turn one on, have this dial all the way on. And then if we shift click, hold down the shift key, click. Uh, now that information is stored. The default state for the preset is that every user interface element in the patcher in the same level of the patcher is stored. Um, that's with nothing connected to the preset. I can change these things. Let's go higher, turn the toggle off, and turn this down to about half, and shift click. And you can see the number by my cursor. So it shows that I'm pointing at slot two. I can shift click and store that in slot two. And um, now, if I click on one, it goes back. Click on two, it goes to two. Okay, so this is the default state. Preset saves everything. Um, I can adjust the number of the slots if I want, and things are still there, but I only have uh, eight slots now. Or I can go to a much bigger number. I can also open up in the inspector uh, just like any object and change things like the slot size. So that's the actual size of the square that you can click on. Uh, if you'd like, make it a little bit bigger. It become a little bit easier to pick out. Obviously you lose real estate, um, but you can resize. You can also change the style, has some preset color combinations. I do like the um, MBO Monokai for doing the best job of highlighting the difference between uh, an empty slot and the light blue, the gray for something stored, and the purple for something selected. Uh, so I tend to switch that around when I add it just to make this easier to use. Okay, so I'm going to close this one and that's what it um, that's what it does. I'm going to add another one so I can specify what to include. Preset has that option. If I want to include some things but not all, uh, I can go through here, add a patcher for a preset um, include. So this one, Going to do the same thing. I'm going to change it to 16 and the MBO Monokai. And over here, as I roll over the outlets, the first one is you can connect to objects to include in the preset. So um, I can do things like some number boxes. 
and a toggle, but I don't want to include this slider and this dial. So I'm going to connect the left outlet to these user interface elements, but not these. Now change them. So 10, 20, and on. Uh, let's also move that up. I'm gonna save by shift clicking. Okay. Now I can change these back down. Uh, I can also add, just change these to whatever. And when I recall the first memory location, it's going to put these back to where I was, but it doesn't change the slider in the dial. I can have multiple presets. So I'm gonna add another preset object. Even give it a different Uh, color scheme, and I can add um, another slider and dial over here and include it with this preset. And shift click, then bring it down. and shift click. And you can see nothing's happening over here with the objects that have been excluded. Um, if they've been excluded from this one, um, or if you've connected anything to the include outlet of a preset, objects, other objects are excluded. I can add more objects, connect them to this different preset, and now I can recall these independent of whatever I'm doing over here. So that's one way to go. Another way is to um, decide what you want to exclude. And this one's good, uh, and I'm gonna give you just a preview of the next video. Uh, if you have a lot of elements, so I'm gonna put a bunch of toggles. highlight them, command Y to make them line up, and that's good enough. And then I'm gonna put in a preset. Um, it's gonna be consistent here and keep changing this. And four is fine. And then, a really big toggle and a bunch of small toggles. I'm going to mouse over, find the third outlet, connect to objects to exclude from a preset. So I don't want to include this one at all. Um, by default now, these are included. So when I lock the patch, turn the first four on, and turn this one on, shift click, um, now I'll turn these off, turn these on, turn this off, shift click to store. Now you can see it go back and forth. The first toggle doesn't change, even though I changed its state, it's connected to the exclude outlet. Uh, but everything else is included, whatever that's in the patcher. Uh, so this is a useful way when you have a lot of elements you want to store uh, and a few you want to exclude. Um, you do have to pay attention. There are things when we get into this and I'll show you in a second video, um, keeping track of all the things you want to exclude is important. So uh, I'm gonna stop with this one and regroup, get the second thing set up, bye.